Hi guys, it's Dorian. I am back again. I'm the anti Bridezilla, as you guys know. So this week we're wrapping up our coverage of Pantone Color of the Year. And if you saw my first video, you know that I covered how you could actually wear the Pantone Color, which is Living Coral, which will come up here. You know that basically you can cover this as a bridal fashion or as regular everyday wear or bridesmaids and there's very easy ways to play with it. So this time when we're coming back we're talking about how you can actually use this color for beauty. And obviously with beauty it's a lot easier and a lot more obvious than um, with fashion, especially with wedding dresses. So. Today is going to be a lot more uh, interactive. You're going to see me doing some swatches here of some colors and some, some amazing beauty products that I have from a few brands that specifically covers the coral color or living coral. Um, and just quick, because I'm sure if you guys saw my first video and now you're seeing me now, you're going to say, wow, you look like you have a lot more makeup on than last time. So let's just talk about that elephant in the room. So when I went through and did my editing for my first video, which was way easier than I thought it was going to be, um, I realized that even though I had a lot of makeup on, um, it didn't look like I did. And basically what happened is I did my makeup on my first video the way I would do my makeup if I'm going out or whatever, and here's a side by side of me versus what my picture looked like that I normally do. And that picture is literally how I will normally look when I go out with makeup, where clearly I have makeup on, but it's not too heavy. But when you're doing it through video and with bright lights with my ring light, it just, it was not a good look. So basically I realized that I was going to have to use a much heavier hand than I would personally normally use for everyday wear. And that's actually a really good teaching concept for you guys when it comes to beauty. So when I talk about beauty specifically for the anti bridezilla I'm always going to be focusing on bridal beauty. And bridal beauty, like American bridal beauty, is going to be a lot more natural, a lot more um, playing up your own features and not so much this heavy hand that you typically will see on Instagram. Now obviously, because I know someone's going to try to come for me in the comments, um, there are different cultures or groups that decide that they want a stronger or bolder look. A lot of times if you look on Instagram and you see that somebody has an Indian wedding or even a Middle Eastern or even a lot of African weddings, you'll see a stronger face and that's very normal and again at the end of the day it's your face <laughs> whatever you want to do to it go for it but if you're saying I want something timeless then you're gonna try to go with something a little bit more neutral so you'll see like a smoky eye maybe a pop of color in the lips but you don't see this really heavily contour excuse me contoured faces when you talk about bridal beauty in the US market so for today's pieces, I actually have two setups here because something I always kind of hate when I watch uh, beauty reviews and things is when somebody does this because who can see that? So also in case anybody is curious, since I'm actually doing swatches today, I also have my micellar water with me. I actually prefer to use, as you can see here, Bioderma. Of course, you can use any kind of um, micellar water that you prefer. It's really up to you. My recommendation is try to find something that's actually very... Um, moisturizing because a lot of micellar waters that I've tried from drugstore brands can be a little drying and I'm somebody with really dry skin so anything that's going to pull even more moisture out of my skin I do not want. So first off there's countless options when it comes to living coral. Um, you, you don't need to just pick these products that I'm pulling. These are just samples really to give you an idea. So I have a, a really good wide range from eyeshadows, lip colors, blushes, and also some nail polish. So actually, let's go ahead and start with the nail polish. So we have China Glaze. This is a really, really cute color that they call a cantaloupe. And kind of a plant cantaloupe, which is one of my favorite fruits. And so if you're curious, this is actually that color, my middle or my uh, accent ring finger, or my ring finger if you like my ring. Um, and it's just really cute. The thing I like about China Glaze, you don't really need to do use a lot. I did two coats to get to this level of uh, color, but it's actually just really easy to use. So this is a great option. Let's move on. So we have Zuzu Lux, which is actually a sub company of Gabriel Cosmetics, if you guys are familiar with them. So Zuzu Lux sent me this eyeshadow pan. This is actually meant to go into, um, if you already have a palette. Um, and basically what you have here is a really, really pretty, it's more like a rusty orange shade. And it actually, I used this in a test drive article that went up earlier this week about um, this product along with a few other items. And it's just a really, really pretty color. It actually has a little bit of a shimmer into it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and swatch this for you guys uh, if you love my tattoo. 
And what I liked about it, obviously you kind of do have to put a little bit more. The pigmentation might be a little bit sheer for somebody who prefers something more opaque. But as you can see here, it has a really great shimmer to it. So it's actually something that's gonna help pick up the light and it's not too matte and dull. So I like that a lot. So that's just one option here for you guys. So we're going to continue on with Zuzu, and now we're actually talking about a blush. So this was graffiti, because I didn't say. Um, now the blush option, this is called Sunset, and this is also has a little bit of a shimmer in it, again from Zuzu. And what I like here is it's a peach. So if you're somebody who you don't really care for pink blushes, this is a really good alternative. Um, it's a powder blush, and it's, you know, it, it mocks up really nicely, You get and it's not too strong. So... Personally, and I'll be honest, I always go for very orangey blushes because I prefer the way they look on my skin tone. But if you're not somebody who wants a really deeper, bolder blush, this is a great option. So as you can see here, it's got like a pinky, peachish shade to it. It's got a little bit of shimmer. So maybe if you're not somebody who wants to do a lot of ton, a ton of um, bronzing and highlighting, this is a great way to kind of do a two-in-one and be done with it. All right, so then we're gonna continue with blushes. And this time we're doing Gabriel Cosmetics, like the actual Gabriel Cosmetics line. Um, and this is a matte blush, matte powder blush that is called Apricot. And this is pretty. Um, it's more pink than the Zuzu was, in case somebody needs to see it. This is Zuzu. So yeah, it's more pink than Zuzu, but this is matte. So if you're somebody who you are perfectly fine either having no highlight, no shimmer, or you do that as a separate step, then this is a really great option for you. So this is definitely more pink. Um, it's it's very pretty. It's just it's very matte. So as a as a personal preference, I don't really do matte shadows or matte uh, blushes. I kind of prefer things that have a little bit of a shimmer because I think it gives it more depth. But this is really great for somebody. Maybe you're easing into beauty and you weren't somebody who typically wore a lot of different things in the past. You're probably gonna like that. This is pretty sheer, honestly. Um, but it's it's also still very pretty. All right. And so we are now almost done with blushes <laughs> we have one more so this is a brand called pyt and the thing about pyt that's pretty cool is that they are um basically a clean beauty brand they're paraben free they don't have any toxic chemicals in it and they also are cruelty free as well so if you're really really focused on that concern which is important then it's good to know that this is not going to have that in it so this is actually called heartbeat cheek color but i do love that it says like no bs which is kind of an um, a nod to their ethos about being cruelty free and, and, and really good and clean for you. So this is something really interesting about this that I found is that I think this makes a really great dupe for NARS orgasm. And I'm going to show you that in a second. So this is again, it's more a very, very pale peach, but I think it kind of gives you some of that. Um, it's not pink, but it has a really nice um, shimmer to it, which I love. And the shimmer is actually kind of like golden undertones. So you've got some two-toning going on here, which is pretty awesome. So let me pull out the NARS so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and clearly in the pan, they're very different. But the multi-dimensional factor is huge here. And obviously I don't wear this or you may not know but I, I typically do not wear the NARS orgasm very often just because like I said before I prefer oranger shades so I've actually typically am using NYX Cosmetics um, Ombre Fieldy although I found out the best didn't discontinue it just kind of sucks so I actually have also have a backup from Kevin Oikon um, their sunset blush which is really vibrant orange which is what I'm wearing today so anyway as you can see here this is NARS this is the PYT and they're really, really similar. Now, if I'm being really honest, um, PYT is a little bit chunkier and NARS Orgasm has more iridescence in it. But I think that, you know, if you're somebody that for some reason you just don't want to wear NARS, then the PYT Heartbeat is a really great option, a really, really good alternative for you. And so we have one more blush company or one more blush option, which is coming from Isadora. So Isadora is a European-based beauty brand that actually is now available here in places like Walgreens, and I'm assuming probably also Dwayne Reed if it's in Walgreens. Um, so this is a draping wheel with blush and glow. So I actually, this also made it into my test drives article that I did um, 
earlier this week and it ended up for me it wasn't a fit and it really is just personal preference and the fact that like I said and I keep saying I really love orange um, based blushes for me because I feel like it, it works best with my skin tone however um, here you see we have one highlight pan here and then the other four are actually um, blushes and I in my article I did earlier this week for swatches and all of the stuff that I'm covering you now um, you'll see that I did swatches of these three so we're gonna go ahead and just swatch that again so you guys can see so what I do like here is that these are finely milled and if you're not familiar with what that means it basically just means that these products have been milled basically or ground down to a point where they're just really really fine powder and the reason that's such a big deal and you see people going crazy like oh my god it's finely milled is because when something is finely milled it doesn't settle on fine lines um and it's less likely to have a ton of fallout so if you ever applied eyeshadow or anything and you realize that like you put it on your eyes and then all under in your face was like cover so you had to go back with foundation and cover it up that's because it wasn't finely milled it was just like quick press and that's it so these products I find that they're really finely milled and actually what I do like even though again I'm being really honest here these are not colors that I would want to wear personally just because personal preference but I think that they're really pretty and they tend to be pretty universal so I just swatched these three in this no this order basically but so you'll see that this color is here the center color is here, which is the one that I actually tried to test drive in my article and I ended up switching out to something else. And then this color is here. So again, you have one that's a matte. So for people who don't like shimmer, the matte is a really great option. It's very bold and that's a true coral shade. And then if you're somebody like me who you like a little shimmer or something to give you some depth dimension, then you're gonna love these two shades here. And personally between the three, if I was gonna pick, it would be this one, which is here. So that is Isadora and this is the, um, Blush and Glow Dipping Wheel Peachy Rose Pop. So we are completely done with face and now we're just doing lips. So next up we have four different lip options, or five, excuse me, and these are pretty cool. So we have a couple of um, lipsticks, which I think you guys are gonna love. So this is Winky Lux. At first I love the name, it's really cute, but something else I really like about Winky Lux is that uh, specifically with this so when I open it this is called sushi it's their matte lip velour and it's a really pretty color by default anyway and when I swatched it it was actually super bold so when they sent me this to test out I didn't realize it was a matte from looking at it I just assumed it was like a satin finish and then when I tested it out it was like this so it's really bold color and the thing is I only did one swipe here and I was able to get that much color so I think this is a really great buy for somebody um, I definitely do want to test this out on a future test drive um, so this is sushi which is really cute okay, so we're gonna continue on with this is Jaffa Royal and Jaffa Royal this shade is definitely bolder but you're gonna be surprised a little bit when you see it actually applied on so I'm doing the swatch and it's actually pretty dark. It's a lot darker than I was expecting. And whereas the uh, Winky Lux was more of a matte, this is more of a, I'm gonna call it a satin finish because it's not super glossy, but it's like, it has some moisture to it, which depending on your finish preferences for makeup, this can be a good or a bad thing. So this is actually called Coral Chic. And as you can see, there it is. Um, then, so Jaffa also sent me the lip pencil that is the accompaniment to this color. So this is called um, Sophie. So we have Sophie. Hopefully you guys can see that and didn't get lost in the shimmer. Um, and I'm not much of a lip liner person, but I do think this is pretty. So what I like about it, one, the color is beautiful. It's perfect. It's a perfect uh, match to <sighs> Lemon Coral. But what's also really great about it is that this is really hydrating. When I took, drew this line, even when I did it um, yesterday when I did my, my article, um, what I noticed is that it's not dragging on my skin, which is one of the big reasons why I tend to not use pencils, whether it's for my eyes or my lips, because I find that they're just very dry. So this is a really good alternative. So the interesting thing about Jaffa Royal is that they include Royal Jelly in all of their products. So these are actually going to be really moisturizing items for you guys um, so that your lips are not struggling and, and fighting against what is going to be a pretty brutal winter in about a couple of days. Um, up next we have Peach Pout from Soap and Glory 
And Soap and Glory, I've been a fan of them for years, mainly for their skincare products. So um, I honestly didn't really even realize that they had makeup products until they reached out to me and said, hey, would you like to try this product out for this video that you guys are making or that you were making? So this is Peach Pow, and its actual color is called Peach Ball. So there's actually um, three colors that are part of their Peach Pow collection. And this is interesting because this is actually a bomb. So if you're somebody who your biggest issue with lipstick is that it's very drying, then I think you're going to love how Peach Balm actually gives you that moisturization and that hydration that you really need, so especially again during the winter time because if you're a bride who's getting married in April, those last three months are going to be critical for you to keep your moisture together so that your skin looks amazing so that you have that wedding glow and that people aren't like, oh, you look like you've been through hell. So that's important. So we're rounding out this Living Coral Beauty review with Again, Zuzu Lux, and so this is actually a shimmery lip gloss. So this is another item that I did test out in my test drives article from earlier this week, which since I've been mentioning it so much, I'll include it in the list in the comments. Um, and then, you know, you guys can see here, it ended up to be really 100% honest and transparent. It wasn't a shade that worked for me, just because with what I was doing with my eyes, which was a lot more bolder in that look that I did, um, it ended up not being a fit. So something that I love about this Zuzu is that it's not sticky. So yeah, the color was not a fit for me just because like I said, I had so much other stuff that I was doing makeup wise that it didn't really fit. But I think that in general, you guys are gonna love how it offers you some shimmer. It's still actually a little bit sheer, so it's not too opaque and too in your face, but at the same time, it's not sticky. And additionally that, um, when you have a glitter and a lipstick, I've occasionally had it from cheaper brands where you can feel the glitter and that's disgusting. You don't feel that here, so that's really nice. So I think these are some shades that you guys are gonna love for lip. Um, again, these are not all inclusive of every living coral item you can ever find in life, but I think you guys are gonna love it. So really quick, because I think this is something that's really important, let's just do a quick come to Jesus about bridal beauty. Um, and beauty in general. So obviously, like I said at the beginning of this video, I obviously put on a lot more makeup today than I normally would. Um, and if anybody is curious about what I use, those products will be in the back um, at the end. And again, another reason why I actually did do such a bold eye, which I normally do not do, is because I was testing out a product. So if you were just finding me on, on YouTube, you may not know that I'm actually an influencer for a number of different brands. One of which is Kevin Lee Khan, who is amazing. Um, and he or they sent me a bunch of their um, new palettes called, and I'll just pull this up here. So it's the Kevin Oikon Emphasize Eye Design Palette. And they sent me four of them, and so I picked one of them today, which is the Focus Palette. So everything, for the most part, everything that I have on my eyes is from this Focus Palette. So the interesting thing today also is that I decided to do pretty much a Kevin Oikon influenced uh, face so that I could do my test drive. So like I mentioned in the beginning, I had to put on a lot more makeup so that it actually shows up on here with all these lights that I have on me. So one of the things that this really highlighted for me um, when I was doing this look in particular, <clears throat> excuse me, is how important it is to take care of your skin. So obviously, um, I had to put a lot more makeup on and that kind of highlights how I need to even baby my skin when I take all this off later on today. And I think that that's something that cannot be overstated is that yes you could do all the makeup tricks in the world to have the best contour the best this the best that but if your skin underneath is trash because you're not taking care of it then your makeup issues are going to be compounded especially because i'm wearing a really heavy face today which i normally never do but if you if you're not washing off the makeup and you're not doing a double cleanse you're not babying your skin in the winter which i'm here in new york new jersey it's very cold um so you need to do those things. So regardless of your makeup choices, whether you do full face, no face, whatever, just make sure that you're always taking care of your skin, especially if you are a bride-to-be, because this is the time in your life where everybody's gonna be looking at you and paying attention to what you're doing, what you're saying, what you're wearing, how you look. And the last thing you want 
is to look back on your pictures from this time of your life and be like, oh, my skin's kind of like not that great. So whatever you can do, make sure you take the time to take care of your skin. Drink more water, make sure you wash your face regularly, make sure you use moist moisture when you can, moisturize. Those are all things that are really important. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this article, this video that I made. Anything that I posted that was in this little box of goodies here is also going to be on the, the article that this actually came from. So that link will be posted down below. Um, be sure to comment, like, subscribe. Be sure to follow me on Instagram. Um, anything that I wore in today's look in terms of makeup is going to be at the end. And of course, um, since I did the whole Kevin Oikon, that will probably be going up well, before this video goes out. So just definitely keep an eye out for that. Um, and thank you guys, have a great day. Be happy, be wonderful. And if you're engaged, congratulations. And I hope I get to help you on your journey. So have a great day. Bye guys.